hero's story often begins in obscurity. For Luke Skywalker, it begins on the desert planet of Tatooine. For Frodo Baggins, it's the all-but-forgotten realm of the Shire. And for Diana Prince, or Wonder Woman, it's the remote island of Themyscira. And these heroes stay shrouded in obscurity, if not for the intervention of a mentor, who possesses the two things that every hero needs, experience and perspective. This mentor values the hero, draws them out of their isolation, trains them, and then commissions them. According to mythologist Joseph Campbell, the hero's journey includes a wide variety of components, but I really wanted to focus on the relationship between the mentor and the hero from the perspective of the mentor. I wanted to see what kind of relationships produce heroes, because, you see, these aren't just stories. They're rooted in who we are, and, and deep down, we really hope they're true. For me, my first mentor was a man by the name of Rick Wood. Rick, just normal life circumstances introduced us, but uh, Rick made a, an intentional decision to mentor me. He, he didn't force the relationship on me. He invited me into it, and I trusted him enough to, to accept. He had a, a, a life history, a set of experiences, and a perspective that was completely different from mine, and, and it allowed me to start to see the world in a different way. He helped me to see that uh, aptitudes in things like singing and cooking and storytelling were just as noble as any other. And he didn't, he didn't undermine the authority of my parents. On the contrary, he compounded the lessons that I had learned from my parents and so many others by giving me opportunities to, to express or to, to apply those lessons to new problems. He believed that at some point in time I would fight for the good of others. And he worked hard to prepare me for the day when I would be on my own. To say that Rick was uh, an influence is a gross understatement because he was more than that. And there's nothing wrong with being an influencer, but understand that there's a difference between those two terms. Influencers are passive. Uh, they're impersonal. They share general knowledge aimed at anyone and everyone. Uh, they risk very little, uh, invest very little, and because of that investment, they reap very little. But mentors are different. Mentors are active and personal. They share specific information aimed at one, maybe two people at a time. They risk greatly, they invest greatly, and as a result, they reap generously. Lots of garage bands claim to be influenced by you know, Bob Dylan or Johnny Cash, maybe the Beatles. But nobody hears that and really thinks that John Lennon is in the living room hammering out the lyrics to the new single. Influences may be able to be heard in the music, but but mentors are credited on the album. So if you decide that you want to be a mentor rather than simply an influencer, you're not going to have to look very far to find a potential hero. Because like we said earlier, uh, heroes are found in obscurity. But more often than not, obscurity is found mm, your neighborhood, the street you live on, a friend of a friend, or maybe just where you work. And it's not about being significantly older than your hero. It's about possessing experience and perspective that could potentially help them and help to draw them out of their isolation. Now, if you look around and you can't find anyone to mentor, or if the thought of approaching someone about mentorship makes you want to vomit, uh, consider joining forces with an organization that are, has already built inroads into populations rich with heroes. Organizations like Boys and Girls Club of America or another after-school program or your local schools, or even consider your area foster care network. Many of these organizations already have uh, programs designed to train you, to equip you, to prepare you, and then to pair you with an individual who could benefit from your experience and perspective. Regardless of where you find this individual, it's likely uh, that you're going to find someone who's, who's a, a little bit guarded or, or maybe even jaded by something that's happened in the past. And that's not a character flaw. That may be rooted in the fact that many have been marginalized, many have been abused, and many have been discarded. So forgive them if it takes a little bit for them to overcome their initial skepticism of your motives. Take, for example, uh, Taylor, the young man that I'm mentoring now. Taylor and I had a relationship for years before he asked me to mentor him. But even, even with that history, it took a little bit he was a little bit guarded in those first few meetings. So I let him know up front that I'm only interested in progress, not perfection. 
And I also let him know that eventually I'm probably going to let him down in one area or another. And I wasn't doing that to make excuses for the future. I was doing that because I wanted him to know that if at some point in time I did something or didn't do something that hurt him, that I would acknowledge it and I would apologize. Patrick Lencioni of the Table Group calls this vulnerability-based trust. When you, when you share or you're open and honest about your uh, faults and limitations, you open the door for your hero to be just as honest and open about theirs. When you share your past experiences in the context in which they occurred, you prove to them that you too are a product of progress. And you, you got to trust them with more than just the truth about you. You got to trust them with all the truth. Just like uh, Professor Dumbledore does whenever he exposes the truth about Cedric Diggory's death. You've got to be the person who refuses to sugarcoat conversation, regardless of how bleak and distasteful it may be. And then, when a subject comes up that you know nothing about, just admit it. It's okay to say you don't know. It's okay that you don't know about the latest artist or game or app or selfie filter. Matter of fact, it's, it's important for your hero to feel like they're the authority in something, to feel like an expert in something, because it helps to reinforce this concept that eventually they're going to be able to offer something to the outside world. And you, you take whatever that is to begin with, and you build upon that. And once you've developed this new layer of trust, you've got to start designing experiences to where they can start to see what, what inspires you, and then look for what inspires them. Once you see that, you start tailoring your activities in order to help them experience that passion and start to invest in it. For another young man, Dusty, it was obvious. From the first time I met him, his passion was music. And at one point in time, whether he'll admit it or not, I was actually a better musician than him. Maybe not so much today, but at one point in time I was. And his dad was the drummer in our band. So uh, it, was, it was easy to have him just come and observe. Just come and watch what we do. And then tell us later what you think about it. Tell us how you think we're doing. How are, we, how are we getting from one song to the next? How are we transitioning within the music? And then as he began to process that mentally and as he was growing his skills as a musician, we, we invited him to come and be a part and, and start to express some of those, those intuitions by playing with us. And it was done in a safe environment. He, did, he wasn't overly exposed. He, he was able to do these things and make some mistakes. And, and it, didn't, it didn't really matter. It wasn't, it wasn't anything that was life or death. But, but then uh, along the way, we started to ask him to take a little bit bolder risk. A little bit bolder risk. And, and to begin to put himself out there. Can you, can you play this, this lead line? Can you play this solo? Can you sing this harmony? Can you sing this song? Can you perform in this arena? And then we'll just back you up. And as he grew and as he grew, he became more confident in the fact that he had something to share. And then we got to ask that all-important question. Who's benefiting from the music that you're producing? Because, see, that's what heroes do. Heroes work hard to save others. They work hard to benefit others. And if, and if your hero doesn't see what they're doing as being valuable to someone else, as, as improving someone else's life, then they, they may become disenchanted with the process and wonder why they're working so hard. So you've got to constantly connect what they're doing with other people. And then at some point in time, as, as it always should, it's going to come time to launch and let go. And that can be hard especially if you're not ready. Almost 10 years ago, my boss's son, JT, decided to end his heroin addiction in my office. So over the next several weeks, nights of either relapse or withdrawal were met with conversations of progress, not perfection. And at the time, I really couldn't imagine a scenario where he would be strong enough to be on his own. But as he grew and as he developed, and he, he, he dedicated himself as a, a husband and a father. It came time for him to move his young family hundreds of miles away, and I was the one that wasn't ready. Because I had forgotten that moving on is the goal. 
And sometimes your hero is going to take the reins for themselves and they're, and they're going to run off. And then other times, like, like Luke Skywalker in the absence of, of Obi-Wan Kenobi, they need to take mentorship from someone new. But either way it happens, either way that happens, I want you to see that as a win. So why, why isn't this happening more? If we see this in our literature, if we can see this in, 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 in the way it has worked, at least in my life, and if, if any of you have actually been inspired by, by this concept, why is it that we don't see it more? Well, I think it boils down to one of two things. Either one, potential mentors don't see their experience and perspective as being valuable to someone else. Or two, and, and far more tragic, they don't see potential heroes as being worth their time. And that could be a result of any number of biases and prejudice. Maybe it's racial, ethnic, gender, religious, or simply age bias. But I've seen far too many potential heroes dismissed because of a label. Because someone decided that this kid would never amount to anything. And if left in isolation, regardless of the, de of the demographic... That could be true of anyone. But it's, it's just like Alan Turing says in the movie The Imitation Game. Sometimes it's the people that no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one else can imagine. So if you are willing to be a mentor, if you're willing to invest yourself deeply, risk yourself greatly, you may inspire someone to do things that they never thought possible. You may even inspire them to someday find a hero of their own. Thank you.